Um, thank you for joining me. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm good. Um, so right now you're in Malaysia, right? Yeah, right, in Malaysia. Okay, and uh, how is the situation there? Well, uh, here in where I'm staying, like uh, in Kuantan, it's not in uh, Kuala Lumpur. It's like four okay. hours away. It's it's a bit better than there because we have only 50 cases at, and uh, it's one of the biggest cities here in uh, Malaysia. So okay. it's, it's good, but uh, people are abiding the rules and they are staying at home. So that's the best part. And there's a lockdown. Uh, there's still lockdown here. People are in quarantine. And we're stay, it's staying, I guess they're going to extend it. Tomorrow there's a government meeting, so we'll, uh, we'll see what will happen. Okay. And uh, are you staying in contact with, like, your teammates, your coaches? Like... Well, we're staying in a compound, you know, like uh, two or three buildings. There are, I had, there's uh, two, import, another, uh, two, uh, like, another two import players in the same building. But uh, like one of them is currently is not in Malaysia. He's stuck outside. He went for vacation and he's stuck. He's stuck there. And the other one is uh, yeah, he's here with the same building. And the other two are staying uh, like somewhere else. Okay. And are they giving you guys like training programs and stuff like this? Like, uh, honestly, no. They aren't giving us any training prog programs. But uh, they like make sure every two or three days the that we should send them some individual training videos to make sure okay. that uh, we're keeping up. So me and uh, like uh, two other imports, the ones that live uh, not in the same compound, on another compound, we're doing uh, training every day, like one hour, one hour and a half together. So okay. when it goes out, we, stay, we just see each other, like for this one hour and a half, we do some training. There's uh, like not a field, but it's a small grass, like a small place where we can do some training. So every day somebody comes, comes. he's the coach, he do a training. So to keep up, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so just like to go back, like how did your move to Malaysia uh, come about? How did it happen? So I was, uh, as you know, the league in Lebanon stopped and there was nothing to do with it. But in Ahed, we had the AFC Cup. They were like, only, we had like four matches only. That's that's it for the season. So uh, an agent from here, from Malaysia, he contacted me. He told me that we saw you last year in the AFC Cup. And uh, there is a team here, which uh, which is Pahang, is interested in having you as, a, as an import player. So I talked to Captain Basim, you know, with Ahed. And yeah. I took the approval. And I came here, so because there was nothing to do in Lebanon, seven uh, like it's a ten month uh, experience. I'm on loan from Ahed, uh, so I yeah. uh, came to try like a new experience, you know. And did you speak to any of the Lebanese players who played in Malaysia before, like uh, Hassan El Dor or Mohamed Ghaddar? Uh, well, honestly, I didn't speak to Ghaddar, but I did uh, speak to Dor, to Hassan El Dor, and he gave me like he helped me a lot. He gave me advice. He told me what to do, how to go through it. Especially knowing that it's my first experience playing outside, so he yeah. like did me a bit. He and uh, Captain Basim as well because he knows a lot uh, in this industry. Yeah, um, and how was the reception in Malaysia when you got there? Like, how did they welcome you? Uh, well, it was good. Yeah, and, uh, I don't know how to tell you exactly, but it was good. The players are so friendly. The staff as well. Even the fans are very like they were. So, they were all excited. And uh, Pahang is one of the biggest clubs here in, uh, in Malaysia. They did the second last year and they, they always compete. Uh, so they have uh, a lot of fans. Uh, and uh, like when we play our home games, uh, almost uh, approximately like 25 to 30,000 come wow. uh, to watch our game. Yeah, So it's a big club. And uh, like everybody was texting me, waiting for you in Pahang. And you know, uh, yeah, that's uh, nice. They were all excited. And how has it been adapting to like living in a new country and new culture? Uh, yeah, it's a new culture, it's a new country. But you know, when when you want to succeed in, in something, you should sacrifice a bit. The first like couple of weeks, it wasn't easy. I'm not gonna lie, it was it was a bit difficult. But then everybody helped me here. There was my agent who stayed with me, the players. Uh, they all uh, like stayed by my side and uh, asked if you need something, we can help because there are some import players that it's their second year here, so they know a bit more. 
and there's also some local players who help me as well like if i need something so it took me two weeks then we we started the league and i and i, I, I adapted quickly there you know when when there's games trainings everything so it, time just passes and uh, what about uh, have you been in contact with Ataya, who's who obviously moved to Malaysia and, uh, around the same yeah. time as you? Yeah, we almost talk like every two to three days. Uh, I went. Uh, he stays in uh, Kuala Lumpur, so I went. Like I visited him three times. It's because it's a four hours uh, car drive or or half an hour by flight. So when I went to him, I went uh, three times by flight. I stayed for the weekend there before our before the season started. I saw him three times, and he was supposed to come last week. So we do like we stay here quarantine, quarantine together. It's always better two than one, you know. Yeah. You don't get bored, but he yeah. couldn't because the police stopped him, uh, like stopped the car there because you're not allowed to go from uh, yeah. city to other city. So he asked the club. They told him you you couldn't go, so because the police will stop you, so he couldn't okay. come. And um, how about like? Uh, the the difference in in football between Malaysia with the Malaysian league and uh, the Lebanese league like what's how is it different? Well, it's quite a bit different, you know, because uh, it's a bit more professional than in Lebanon. You know, even this like in Lebanon, you have maybe two or three clubs that really are professional and work in a professional way. Although now, like, there's nobody anymore. Only you can see Ahad that's working prof- in a professional way. Uh, but here in Malaysia, even like the the teams that do last or the teams that do first, they all, they all they are like I'm not telling you 100% professional, but way better than what we have in Lebanon. You know, here in Malaysia there's Johor that it's the top team. It competes in the champions, the AFC champions in the AFC Champions League. It's it's like full professional. They even uh, opened their new field this year, uh, their new yeah. stadium. It's like the camp the same specifications. And the all clubs are better. Like and prof- they have their own stadium. Uh, they are professional. How to meet? How to uh, like? How to yeah. you know, with the players and stuff? You know. Okay. And in terms of like the the style of football, like actually playing in the games, like how do you feel that that's like different? How is it different? It's different. Like of course, like in Lebanon individually, you see it's much better than what you expect here in Malaysia. But here in Malaysia, like as a team. Because there's so much training, so many heads, like staff, coaches, every like the defenders have their own coach, their the attackers have their own. You have some video sessions and this stuff. So there's a lot of like as I told you, professionalism. This this leads to a better like team chemistry on the field. So that's what okay. uh, like in Lebanon we lack. In Lebanon, like there individually, you have players which are like way be- better than what you see here. Uh, but uh, here, like, also there is five imports players on the field, so that's that changes a lot. That's imp- that uh, improves the league here. Yeah. Um, uh, what I want to ask you is, um, how do you feel like you like in terms of playing in Malaysia? You've played uh, a few games now. Do you feel like you're benefiting from that in terms of your game? Yeah, of course. So, uh, like to be honest, it's way better than sitting in Lebanon doing nothing. There's yeah. no league, there's nothing to do. So it, first of all, it's a new experience. It's a new like new new way of playing here. You you don't know nobody. It's a new language. You you should adapt to this. So it's helping you. Yeah, I I just came like one week before the league starts. So we didn't have like a lot of team chemistry uh, to cope with other players. So our two matches we lost and we lost in a very bad way. Like we were the better team. We just conceded stupid goals. Yeah. And we lost uh, both two first games. We lost uh, 90 on the 90th minute. So we, nobody was like 100% fit. And then we, throughout the season, like throughout the, our first four games, then our two games, we were very good. We were focusing. We did two clean sheets and we won both games. So obviously, like our team is a very good team. We can compete this year, of course, but we just needed some time. And now with everything stopped, I think that's uh, but, but like it's better for us. But uh, if we continue to train. That's yeah. And um so uh, you spoke about the team, like that they're improving. What are the hopes like for the season? Obviously, once football returns. 
Well, here in Bahang, like every year, they, their hopes are to clinch a title. I'm not okay. telling you like uh, for sure, like they they expect to win all three because there's the FA Cup, there's the Malaysian Cup, and there's the the league. Yeah. So every year, like they they fight in, th in the three of them. Last year, they did semi final in both cups. They lost in a dramatic way in both, and in the league, they did second. So this year, of course, we want at least to get one of these three. Okay. And um, so, in, uh, in terms of the coaching, uh, like, how would you say the coaching is different between, like, in Lebanon and, uh, and Malaysia? Well, you coaching, said that there's, like, coaches for each position, but, like... Uh, like, when you start training, you have a fitness coach, you have like, a warm-up coach, a stretching coach, a goalkeeper coach, of course. There's the assistant coach who does the, who does the training. There's the manager... So, you know, every, everybody knows his part, not like in okay. Lebanon. You, know, you have one coach that is, is doing almost everything, like the warm-up, yeah. the stretching, the match analysis, the substitutions. The, he, almost, uh, you can even see in Lebanon, like the, even the, the manager or the, or the coach, he, he should take care of some, uh, like for the salaries and for the, yeah. for the kids, for like these small, uh, small problems that you face. Here, you don't have to worry, like... You have the the kit man, the ball man, the, the everything, you know. Yeah, so it's not more specified. Yeah, it's more specified and like and uh, like a bit more professional. Yeah, Com like, I'm comparing the, like what I'm living here to what you can see like in Lebanon, not to not for a certain team because I played in Ahed, so in Ahed yeah. like it, it was a bit more professional than the other teams in Lebanon. You know, we had our own uh, uh, tactical coach, Coach Daniel. I, I guess yeah. you know. There's Coach Basim, we had the, before Coach Iyad, so uh, there's Coach Khalil, we have the, uh, Muhammad Shere for the salaries and stuff, the kit man. Uh, so it's, it was a, a huge staff. But if you look at other teams, with all respect, of course, they have one guy that does everything. So that's the, that's the problem. Yeah. Um, and so for you personally, uh, what are your plans like what, for the future in terms of, do you want to stay in Malaysia longer than the loan or...? Well, uh, honestly, I don't know what to tell you because it's, uh, I've been here just for two months and with the coronavirus, nobody knows where we're going to... Hopefully it will end soon, of course, but we never know what will happen. Yeah. The, maybe the league will stop, the league will continue, it will, uh, they will extend it, they will make it shorter, nobody knows, you know. So now, like, like everybody in the world, we're just living day by day, so we see what happens next. So, uh, like, do you want to wanna, wanna continue like playing abroad or...? Well, of course, if there's no league in Lebanon and uh, nobody's uh, supporting uh, the, the Lebanese football and there's nothing to do, of course, I'll stay here. And uh, if I have new opportunities other than in Malaysia, of course, I'll take them into consideration. As long as there's no uh, football in Lebanon and, and like if they don't change the way they are doing it in Lebanon, of course, I won't come back. Okay. But it, all it all depends also on my team, Ahad, because I'm on loan. It's not yeah. like I have my... Uh, contract, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, in general, do you, how do you find it in terms of like leaving Lebanon as a footballer? Is it difficult to find opportunities? Well, it, this, it depends. Like every player has his own uh, opportunities, his own chances. You even should think if you should take this chance, don't take it. So I thought a lot before coming here. Like, was it worth it? Should I come? It's a new experience. Can I do it? Like, you know, you know. We yeah. Have many, and especially that year in Malaysia, the the league starts uh, like completely opposite opposite to Lebanon. So we finish yeah. here. The the Lebanese uh, league would have started. Yeah. So, to take all into consideration. So so yeah, maybe. I thought a lot about it, but every player that has an opportunity to to play abroad, even for one year, it's a new experience. He should, they should, somebody should try it. So he might like it, he might not. You should always try everything in life, and then you you choose if you you do it again, not do it again. But don't let anything stand in your way. Yeah, and just like if if I look at like some of the Lebanese players. Uh, the ones that go abroad or the ones that don't go abroad. There's like some fantastic players, some that you played with that didn't go abroad. In your opinion, what explains this? Is it their choice? Is it just lack of opportunities? Well, uh, well, it depends. Like every individual has has to make up his own choice. Maybe it's his choice. He doesn't want to go because he want to stay with his family. 
maybe he didn't have the opportunity, maybe the, he got an offer, but it's not what he wanted. So yeah, each one, like everyone has his own cases that uh, he should take into consideration. Like you can't compare me to someone else. Maybe yeah. it's, a, it's a bit different. So that's it, basically. Do you think that maybe it's a bit of a positive that, I mean, obviously we want the league to continue in Lebanon, but maybe it kind of pushed a few players to leave. So yeah. now we have more players playing abroad. Like, like to be honest, me if the the league continued and we were playing the AFC Cup and all the players stayed, I would have never thought to leave Ahad and to leave Lebanon, because I was very happy there. We were like it was professional, as I already told you, and we like we had we were like one family. We were uh, we were fighting everything. We were almost we were not fighting. We won everything last year. So so yeah. you know, I was super. Happy with my team, I would have never thought to left. But of course, the league stopped. The, the, the not even the league stopped. Only the league stopped. But uh, like everyone stopped. Uh, uh, like what do you say? Everybody stopped uh, putting his concern in football. You know. Yeah. So there are clubs who stopped training. Clubs who stopped uh, paying. Even the al wada You know. Yeah. Uh, wasn't wasn't something promising. Like if you look. Uh, f- it's always wrong to look like what's going to happen tomorrow. You always should look on the long run what's going to yeah. happen. And on the long run, there was nothing showing that it's going to be good. It's going to things are going to be good like in a month or two. It, yeah. If, if Lebanon today, like if today everything's back to normal, you need three years to to uh, to get back to like football and the, the economic situation and everything to recover from all this. Yeah. Um, so especially, obviously. Especially knowing that in Lebanon, all who like uh, put money and invest in football don't take anything in return. Yeah, now, that's true. Now, yeah, and now economically it's getting worse in Lebanon, so nobody's gonna go and invest in football and take nothing in return. Yeah. Um, so in terms of you uh, with the national team, you went to uh, the West Asian Championship in the summer, and then uh, you stopped going. So could you? Explain sort of what happened from your point of view. Well, yeah, I went to Iraq. We played the, this tournament, the West Asian tournament. Then I got called up for the first game. When was it? Where was it? In Kuwait, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, well, honestly, I was in the States. I wasn't in Lebanon. Yeah. I, I had to do something with the university, so I couldn't uh, follow up. Uh, okay. And then I came back, I got called to the second game. Uh, it was in Lebanon, I guess, against Sri Lanka. Or, or, or what, where was it exactly? Turkmenistan, I think. Turkmenistan, yeah. I also had some university things, you know. I, I, honestly, I just wanted to, uh, I just had to focus a bit on university to graduate because, like, football alone will, will never, ha- like, ha- will never give you a bright future, especially in Lebanon, you know. So I had yeah. to finish degree I had to focus it was my fifth year and I had to focus a lot I had to sacrifice a bit from football just to take my degree like I take my degree I have it in my pocket and then I I can do whatever I want so I had so it was a very difficult choice because everyone like everyone uh, dreams of playing for the national team and of course of course I took my decision after thinking a lot and but uh, you know there are priorities in life so I decided to take my degree and then I will I, and then it will be easier I, I can do whatever I want and uh, like have you been have you spoken to leave you since uh, since you moved to Malaysia is there contact with anyone in the Federation for regarding your your return to the national team uh, yeah well uh, when I moved to Malaysia uh, Fuad Balhawen you know him the, yeah uh, director yeah he called me and uh, we, uh, he, I gave him the club name. He was. Uh, he asked me all details because uh, they were going to call us for the FIFA break, uh, like ten days, yeah. uh, twenty days ago for, uh, for the games. Yeah, he took me and Ataya. We gave him all info. He wanted to call us up. We were. I was going this time. I was going. I had nothing, and there was FIFA days, so we were going. But unfortunately, all this uh, happened. Yeah, uh, and um, uh, if. Just to talk a bit about the AFC Cup, uh, looking back at it, so you said that Ahed were a bit more professional, but what do you think, what would you put it down to the success that Ahed had in the last couple of years, uh, especially in the AFC Cup? Because we saw Lebanese teams reach the final before, but it felt like we could never quite break that barrier, and you guys were able to do that. So what would you put it down to? 
Well, there are many factors that help. Like, you know, we had a great team, of course. That's uh, that's uh, the major thing. All players were, we had the best players in Lebanon and the best import players. And especially after Akeishi come, he was a very good addition. So this is the main factor. Another main factor is our coach, uh, which, which like, I've never seen a coach that deals with players like this in that way. He's so professional. He don't care who, who the player is. He just one works what or he just works what's better for the team. He he stays all day, all night in the club. Just want, wants the better for the club and for the team. So that's another aspect. Uh, the third aspect is also like you had a bit of luck in games, especially. So that's a very important factor. People tell you, yeah, luck, 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 but you always need some a bit of luck. You know, in some games, because we can see, like in the semi-final uh, when we played uh, against Al Jazeera, and the second, in the second leg, because you you're not always like you you don't always play your best football, but you need a bit of luck. So they were better than us, but we won one zero. You know, so the luck was uh, on our side. And finally, uh, like in the final, we had the game against the North Korean team. It got uh, it got uh, changed uh, to Malaysia. We didn't play in uh, North Korea, so that was very important. Uh, we, of course, we wanted to play in Beirut. The final in Beirut, like because yeah. they changed it. Hopefully, like soon, we will uh, we'll get back to the final and play again. But all these factors like add up uh, to get to get to the to ha- help us to clinch the title. You know. Okay. And uh, do you think that that experience playing in the AFC Cup kind of helped you prepare to play in another country like you're doing now? Yeah, of course. Well, well the AFC Cup is, is, is way better than playing locally, you know? You play, yeah. against, you play against more experienced players, more experienced teams. You, you get more experience by playing every game. Like, every game is, so, is important. And uh, it's like... Playing one game in AFC, it's like playing 10 games in the Lebanese league. You know, yeah. It's more competitive, the, the opponents are better. So that's it. And we had a target. So it's we we played for three years. Three years we we arrived to the semi-final and we lose, we lose. So also this experience that we gained and we knew that we knew how to deal with matches. We we got more experience. Everybody like it's four years in a row we played. So everybody got experience. Everybody knew like even though you're one zero down, you have another leg. So that's what we did. We went to or to Jordan two times. Uh, we stayed defensively there. We came. We wanted to win here. That's what yeah. happened. We won one zero there, zero zero here, and the second game as well. So so we, we got uh, experience in that way. That that helped a lot. Okay. Um, so just uh, obviously you said that it's hard to plan for the future but I, ideally like looking forward what what would you like to do well of course the first thing I hope is like to Lebanon to 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 recover from all this what's happening of course the first thing is the virus to stop thank you. second thing uh, the Lebanon to recover from all the economic situation and all what's happening and third of all uh, third uh, when the league uh, goes back and the, like, I don't just want it to go back. We want it to go back and more in, in a more professional way. You know, I don't know what they should change. Something should be changed, but uh, because we, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of talents in Lebanon that that are, that I don't know, like they stay in Lebanon or they stop football or that's that's very pity that's happening. So something should change maybe in the in the like in the core of the of the game in Lebanon. So hopefully this will all change. Hopefully we can have our league back, our games back, our national team. Of course, the success of the national team helps a lot in the, uh, the league in Lebanon. So hope all these will come back to normal and uh, we go back, we play in Lebanon and uh, continue like how, what happened before. Okay, uh, well, I th- I'm, gonna, I'm done here. So thank you very much for speaking to me. And uh, I hope you stay safe and hopefully we get back to football soon. Thank you. Thank you for your interview and for your time. And uh, keep the good work and see you soon. And and stay thank safe. you. Bye. Bye.